Coming up on BCN Today. The Supreme Court shoots down BC's bid to regulate what can flow through the Trans Mountain Pipeline. Plus, a prominent member of the Blood Tribe dies, and the family of a missing man needs volunteers to expand the search. Your Canada. Your Southern Alberta. Your stories. From our studios in the heart of Lethbridge, it's BCN Today with Jeanette Roche. Hello and thank you for joining us on this Friday. The family of a Lethbridge man who's been missing since November is organizing a ground search of the River Valley next weekend. 27-year-old Marshall Iwasa was last seen on November 17th when he was leaving for Calgary but never showed up. His burnt up truck was found north of Whistler a week later. The family posted on the Find Marshall Iwasa Facebook page this week that they're wanting to conduct a search where Marshall was last seen. The river bottom area of Indian Battle Park. They're asking for volunteers for Saturday, January 25th and Sunday, January 26th at 9 a.m. on both days. You may contact the family through their Facebook page. In other news, Lethbridge police are investigating after a vehicle was stolen from the north side and then set ablaze. Police say it occurred Wednesday morning just before 8.30 as a car was left running to warm up at a home on Stafford Bay North. A witness says the owner saw his vehicle backing out of his driveway and ran out to try to stop it. I was getting into my vehicle and I noticed a car that was, well, I thought it was out of control because it was actually veering towards a neighbor's fence and noticed a gentleman uh, trying to pull a guy out of the driver's seat. And so uh, my neighbor was out at the same time and so we both went over as the vehicle kind of disappeared down the street and the guy was walking back and the guy said that he got his car stolen. Uh, so what we did was I told him to phone 911 I phoned 911 as well and talked to the LRPS uh, dispatcher and told them what had went down. And then eventually we saw the car later, or that a couple minutes later coming out of the end of Stafford Boulevard, and he must have saw us and turned onto Stafford Road. The car was later found by Coldell RCMP on fire in a farmer's field. The suspect who got away is described as a white male, about 20 to 25 years of age, wearing a gray coat with a fur hood. If you have any information that can help police, give them a call at 403-328-4444. Alberta Premier Jason Kenney said he was shocked on receiving the news that his friend Jason Goodstriker died. Goodstriker was a member of the Kainai Band of the Blackfoot People who served as a band counselor and was elected as Alberta Regional Chief for the Assembly of First Nations. In a release on Thursday, Kenney said, Good Striker was a passionate Albertan serving most recently on the Fair Deal panel. Jason had a huge heart, was proud to work in the oil and gas industry and to fight for indigenous people to benefit fully from the development of our natural resources. I was proud to call Jason a friend since we attended a school together in Saskatchewan. BC Premier John Horgan says his government will do what it can to protect the BC coast and environment after a Supreme Court ruling that shut down the province's attempt to regulate what can flow through an extend, or expanded rather, Trans Mountain Pipeline. The High Court's ruling yesterday removes one of the remaining obstacles for the project, which would run alongside an existing pipeline from Edmonton to Burnaby. The Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers says it's pleased with the decision and says the project has been found to be in the best interest of Canadians Natural Resources Minister Seamus O'Regan says the project will help the federal government get resources to market and support good middle-class jobs. Health officials are urging people to get the flu shot. As Canada's chief public health officer warns, two influenza strains are making the rounds this season. Dr. Teresa Tam says the double dose of both influenza A and B is definitely having an impact on different communities and individuals. With the A strain typically targeting the elderly, while the B strain tends to hit young people. 
Driving a car is a luxury and it's becoming even more of an expensive one. Some auto insurance companies have hiked rates as much as 30%. According to the Alberta Automobile Association Rate Board, since the last government's rate cap expired in August, almost every insurance company has filed for rate increases. Lethbridge West MLA Shannon Phillips says her office has been receiving a high number of, of calls from people complaining that their insurance rates went up uh, two to $300 per year. And apparently, many insurance companies say they're actually losing money. Mark Feehan is with Fair Alberta Injury Regulators. He says we should not believe everything we hear when it comes to insurance companies saying that they're in the red. So far this year, uh, just by way of example, one insurance company, AMA, everybody knows who AMA is, they have made in the first half of this year bef profit before taxes of over $32 million. So, right, so, so how are they losing money? We have said to the insurance industry, if you're saying you're you're losing money, open your books. Let us have a look at your books. And they have just ignored us. Catch the full interview with Mark Feehan from FAIR discussing the insurance industry and where you stand. That's coming up in the second half of our show. A uh, one-of-a-kind event in southern Alberta has been an important uh, platform for discussing current trends in the red meat industry. Over 350 agricultural producers, students, and industry experts attend the Tiffin Conference every year. As BCN's Loris Alexander explains, a new trend is seeing more women and young people getting involved. The 21st annual Tiffin Conference took place at the Sandman Signature Lethbridge Lodge Thursday morning. A full day of speakers examine a variety of topics, including women navigating the industry. One of the sessions I'm most excited about today is actually our industry panel. Um, it features four ladies, um, and they're going to talk about how agriculture um, has impacted their life and how they've found their way in that industry that in the past has been male dominated. We are talking about um, overcome, overcoming challenges in the agriculture industry and how we've become successful in our own roles and also how we've learned to get into the industry and contribute in our own ways. So we're all very different. Um, my role specifically is talking about public trust and telling our story um, from a communi communications background. Students in Lethbridge College's Agriculture Sciences program were also able to attend the conference as part of their studies. I didn't think some of the stuff I was going to be learning would be useful, but I'm able to take almost all my information back to the farm. They try and make it so that it'll apply to your regular life, not just, you know, to the realistic farm. Um, and just the biggest thing, you know, just keep an open mind to the different operations around, you know. We have, in our college, we have dairy, hog, sheep, cattle, grain operations. So to have that such a variety and to, you know, connect with all of them, it's, you know, it's all about making your connections. That's the biggest thing you can do while you're in college is make those big connections. The Tiffin Conference was established in honour of Ronald Tiffin and is administered by Lethbridge College. For Bridge City News, I'm Loris Alexander. Thank you, Loris. The grand reopening of the re renovated Buchanan Library at Lethbridge College took place this week as part of the $3 million project. There are five new breakout rooms, a place dedicated for the Buchanan art collection, a new 3D printer, and an opportunity for students and faculty to work side by side. The priority for us was really being able to serve our learning community in the best way that we can. Um, over the last, up until this point, we were scattered all across the campus. So uh, if, if faculty needed support, they could have gone to one to five different places. Students needed support, they'd go to different places. So we really wanted to create a place, a hub, where all of all of our learning community's needs could be met in one location. Lethbridge College opened in 1957 as the first publicly funded community college in Canada and currently has just over 5,100 students. SACPA hosted a former UN envoy this week to discuss whether the UN's sustainable development goals are achievable by the year 2030. Trevor Page asked if the UN's development goals are realistic when it comes to climate change, hunger and migration. I'll be talking about the sustainable development goals. These are a series of 17 goals 
which our world governments agreed to back in 2015. They cover a whole range of socio-economic and environmental issues, and the idea is that we need to make the world a better place for all of the world's people to live in. Of the 17 goals, I'll be talking on three of the, or two of the most important, hunger, everyone needs to eat, and I'll also be talking about climate, about migration. Migration is not one of the 17 goals, but it's uh, an outcome largely because the goals themselves aren't working properly yet. Trevor Page worked for the United Nations for 31 years. Most of his work was with the World Food Program in Africa, Asia, and the UN Refugee Agency. A trial has begun in Lethbridge for a 54-year-old father from Raymond. He's facing charges that include sexual assault and incest. Uh, the man's name cannot be released because of a publication ban. A jury trial began Wednesday with opening statements. Crown Prosecutor Tom Bannon said he intends on calling the alleged victim, who was between the ages of 9 and 13 when the alleged abuse took place, as well as her mother and other family members. Past and present politicians filed into the Anglican Cathedral of St. John the Baptist in St. John's, Newfoundland for the funeral service of John Crosby. Former Prime Ministers Joe Clark and Brian Mulroney uh, filled out the front pews along with past and present premiers and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau at the service for the former federal politician remembered for his wit and passion. He was always prepared and left little to chance. In his later years, when asked what he was reading, with a glint in his eye, he'd reply, the Bible, I want to be ready for my final exam. For our father, politics was a calling to service. He did it oh so well. Among the good works that leave their mark on human events in his beloved province and country are free trade, Hibernia, the jewel in our offshore crown, and the Atlantic Accord. On these still rest the cornerstone of our economic prospects, and the honor and respect earned by my father and his willing colleagues. The country will never be the same, will it? I mean, he defined Canadian politics when he was in, uh, in the federal parliament. I got to know him, he was a friend and a colleague, and whether it's his intelligence, his humor, his commitment, uh, there will never be another person like John Crosby, ever. Former Prime Minister Brian Mulroney delivered a eulogy remembering Crosby as a patriot and valued member of Cabinet. Canada and other countries are demanding compensation from Iran for the families of the people killed when Iranian forces shot down the airliner leaving Tehran last week. Canada hosted a meeting with representatives from the UK, Sweden, Afghanistan and Ukraine. Foreign Affairs Minister Francois-Philippe Champagne said the group is judging Iran's cooperation day by day. The framework is centered on five key elements that will guide our engagement with the Iranian authorities to ensure, first, full and unhindered access for officials to and within Iran to provide consular services. Second, ensure that the victim identification process is conducted with dignity transparency, and according to international standards, and that the wishes of the families regarding repatriation are respected in all cases. Third, ensure a thorough, independent, and transparent international investigation open to grieving nations governed by the Convention on International Civil Aviation. Fourth, ensure Iran assumes full responsibility for the downing of flight PS752 and recognizes its duties to the families of the victims, including compensation. Fifth, ensure accountability for those responsible to an independent 
criminal investigation, followed by transparent and impartial judicial proceedings, which conform to international standards of due process and human rights. The Republican-led U.S. Senate passed the new North American Trade Pact. It's the final piece of legislative business before it transforms into a high political court for the impeachment of Donald Trump. It passed by a wide margin at 89 to 10. President Trump is expected to sign the deal as early as next week. This is a major step for our whole country. In the 26 years since the ratification of NAFTA, trade with Mexico and Canada has come to directly support 12 million American jobs, 12 million workers and their families who depend on robust trade with our North American neighbors. Our neighbors to the North and South purchase half a trillion dollars in American goods and services every single year. The Canadian Liberals have been waiting for the Americans to sign before introducing its own Im implementation bill. Mexico ratified the deal back in June. Officials in the Prime Minister's office say they expect the agreement to be of top priority when Parliament resumes on January 27th. And it looks like the extreme cold will be behind us soon, but a blizzard is descending on parts of Newfoundland. I'll have a full look at weather coming up right after the break. Stay with us. And welcome back. Here's a look at our weather highlights for today and tomorrow in Lethbridge. Today we're experiencing some light flurries that should dissipate later. The high today, minus 23, low overnight, minus 32. As we end that polar vortex, looking into tomorrow, the high, minus 19. Actually, that's a lovely reprieve compared to what we've experienced all week. And then look at what's coming for us here. We've got some nice mild temperatures. Minus three is the high on Sunday. And then as we climb into the pluses, seven degrees on Monday, four degrees is expected on Tuesday, and then all the way up to six degrees on Wednesday and Thursday as we see a lot of sunshine coming next week and what a wonderful reprieve for us as we get out of that horrible polar vortex that we've been experiencing all week. Okay, highs and lows for this time of year. Minus two, the high minus uh, 14 is the low. We've obviously reached much lower than that. The high temperature on this day was 12 degrees in 1976 and the low minus 41 that was back in 1950. Thank goodness we didn't get there this week. Sunrise this morning was 8.22 a.m. and the sunset will be at 5.01 p.m. And let's take a look at our national forecast as we look over to the west coast. Victoria and Vancouver today should see some flurries. High of 4 degrees in Victoria, Vancouver's high 2 degrees. Edmonton should see a high of minus 23 today, minus 24 in Calgary as we're still experiencing those, that cold weather across Alberta today, but tomorrow will be much better. Uh, same thing for Saskatoon and Regina. We've seen quite a bit warmer weather here. Minus 17, minus 19 in Regina, and Winnipeg all the way up to minus 9. So a nice reprieve as well for Saskatchewan and Manitoba. Looking over to the east, lots of sunshine in this area today. Minus 8 the high in Toronto, minus 14 in Ottawa, and minus 12 is expected in Montreal tons of sunshine, which is nice to get away from the snow that they've experienced. Now, Atlantic Canada, be warned, a blizzard is descending down on the St. John's on eastern parts of Newfoundland. St. John's has actually issued a warning to its residents. Be prepared with emergency kits that can last up to 72 hours as they're expected to be snowed in. 40 to 75 centimeters of snow is expected and the St. John's International Airport will be closed as well. That's your weather forecast. Here's a look at what's coming up. Here's your Bridge City News community calendar. The Lethbridge Antique and Toy Show and Sale is taking place January 18th from 9.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. and January 19th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Italian Canadian Club. Discover all kinds of toys for your kids, plus interesting displays, collectibles, and antiques. Admission is $4 and children 12 and under are free. For more details, call Brian Mitchell at 403-545-0150 or visit the Lethbridge Antique and Toy Show and Sale Facebook page. 
Ready to take the plunge? Southern Albertans are invited to take part in this year's Polar Plunge in support of Special Olympics, taking place Saturday, February 1st at Henderson Lake Park from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Every dollar raised goes towards more than the 3,300 Special Olympic athletes representing 140 communities across Alberta. Registration is $50 and comes with a pair of Polar Plunge gloves. For more details and to register, visit specialolympics.ca slash albertapolarplunge. Celebrate Family Day at the Galt Museum and Archives for their second annual free pancake brunch. Taking place on February 17th, beginning at 10 a.m., come and enjoy delicious pancakes, music, crafts, and games. And while you're there, check out the exhibits and complete a special treasure hunt. Admission is free. For more information, visit galtmuseum.com slash events. And that's your Bridge City News community calendar. Canada is deploying 69 more firefighters to help battle the blazes in Australia. The Canadian Interagency Forest Fire Centre said 27 incident management staff left for Melbourne yesterday, followed by two more managers and 40 firefighters this weekend. We're uh, filling a resource request for the incident management team. Um, and it's through, coordinated through our local government here. A lot of it has to do with the weather conditions that they're experiencing down there right now, and their humidity levels, as well as the fuel types that they have there, as opposed to the fuel types that we have here. So that's causing rapid rate spreads, which is uh, increasing the fire severity. It is a mixed bag of emotions today. Um, certainly um, looking forward to, to helping out. I was in British Columbia in 2017, and the Australians were in Canada helping with those efforts. So we are get to return the favor here and, and give our expertise down there. Australian officials say a specialist firefighting team was able to help save prehistoric pine trees from wildfires which burned nearby. These trees can be found nowhere else in the world. In fact, there's only 200 left on the planet. So we needed to do everything we could to protect them and ensure that they were able to survive into the future. Many insurance companies say they're hurting financially, which is why you may have noticed that your car insurance rates have gone up. But are they really hurting? Mark Feehan from Fair Alberta Injury Regulators joins us and gives us his thoughts coming up right after this short break. 